hope everyone is seeing my presentation now. Yes, Omar, it is clear. Okay, uh, hello everyone. I'm Omar Hamid, business developer at OPA, and I will talk for a few minutes about our on online internship that will be delivered in the next month. So our full package of internship will cost $300 after we cut the price from $750 due to the circumstances in Lebanon. But also you can take the different parts of the, uh, of the internship individually. For example, you can take the OFM software in the first week for $120 or Prosper software in the second week for $120 too, or the uh, real case data projects for uh, two weeks for $160. But if you take them as a collective uh, internship, it will be $300, it will be cheaper for you. And also you'll be certified for each one of the uh, software courses. And if you take the uh, whole internship, you will have uh, an internship certificate from us. So how to enroll in this internship? First, you have to register through the link that will be sent in the chat now by my colleague, Islam. And then you have to confirm your enrollment by sending us an email containing the WhatsApp number so that we can add you to a group and we can communicate with you more easily. And then you have to pay the fees one week before the start of the internship so that you can reserve your spot in the internship. Not only you will learn technical skills in this internship, but you will have international exposure where you will communicate with people from different places in the world and you will uh, widen your network of people in the oil and gas industry. The people joining till now in our internship are from Lebanon, Oman, Sudan, Pakistan, and India, and hopefully we will have more nationalities soon. And if you have any other questions, you can contact us on our Instagram at OPA Lebanon or at our email OPA Lebanon at opacourses.com. And thank you, and I give the microphone back to uh, my colleague Jad. Thank you, Omar. And now I will show with you the rules that we have to follow during our webinar. Please use your full name in the meeting because it will be taken as your attendance. If you didn't, please feel free to change it now. Two questions will be answered at the end of the session. Three, after the meeting, a feedback form will be sent by email. Please all make sure to fill it. Four, please all open your video at the end of the session so we can take a picture all together. And now, Engineer Islam will conduct the technical session. Engineer Islam, the stage is yours. Assalamu alaikum. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, your voice is clear. Uh, good evening again. Uh, I am Islam Doin, uh, Center Sur Engineer. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you all uh, for attending this webinar. Uh, and uh, thank you to OBA for uh, making this uh, achievable. Uh, today we will have a session about uh, oil field manager, Islam Berger package for production. Uh, of course, it's uh, a big software with a lot of uh, workflows in it, so to take time to cover all of it. Uh, but we will have uh, uh, just uh, an overview uh, of the software, the uh, of the software. I shared with you now the presentation. I hope you all can see it. Um, uh, OBA records a webinar, but you can record it too if you would like to. Uh, and feel free to prepare any questions to be answered at the end of the webinar. Uh, as I mentioned, this session is Oil Field Manager, OFM, Principles and Practice. We will talk about the main principle about the production software and uh, how to use it in a practical uh, way uh, in a case uh, in a field case studies. Uh, our agenda today is have uh, four main topics: the production surveillance uh, software, uh, different packages. What is the difference between uh, uh, every batch of them? Uh, and the benefits of everyone uh, would have an overview of the OFM graphical user interface and how to uh, navigate across the windows. 
Uh, we'll have uh, a quick review about the decline curve analysis and how to do the decline curve uh, through OFM. Then how to do a water flooding conformance and uh, manage your fail through the OFM plots and maps. Uh, this uh, slide, what is meant by production surveillance software? Uh, it helps engineers to manage more wells effectively in less time. Uh, that means that uh, in all the days, we all the production and the reservoir engineers used to use Excel sheets, different Excel sheets. Everybody have a separate Excel sheet on his computer, some papers, so uh, to have all the data in one place, that was difficult and it can be a heavy task to do. Now, using the new technologies and the new databases and the capabilities, you can uh, migrate and uh, co uh, collect all the data in one database and co connect it through this database through a software like the OFM uh, or other uh, commercial packages and uh, try to do the analysis. You will have uh, no extra effort to do to manage or uh, prepare your data. It's all in one place. You just uh, think about what you need and you will find it. Uh, there are a lot of packages in the market. Uh, three are uh, major known for uh, petroleum engineers uh, working in the oil industry. Uh, the first one would be Schlumberger Oil Field Manager. Uh, it can be called OFM. Uh, we have Landmark, uh, it's a company uh, belongs to Halliburton. Uh, Dynamic Surveillance System is uh, DSS. Uh, and there is another package called Digital Analog. Uh, knowledge system, DAKS. Uh, starting with the OFM, uh, what is the method of the OFM? What is the advantages of it? Uh, the graphical user interface uh, of the OFM is very, very simple. Uh, it's based on the, what's called the ribbon design, like the office you have uh, using Word or PowerPoint. It's very simple. You can uh, uh, do any job not in a sequence way. You don't have to follow steps. It's just uh, uh, you can uh, go around some steps to have uh, at end the uh, action or result. Uh, it have a very good uh, visualization and uh, blotting uh, engine. Uh, it can be connected to different Schlumberger software like simulation models. Better you can import and export the data directly into the vitrail through the studio. You can uh, connect the data through the production allocation software offset, some major offset to use to back allocation production for the wells. And uh, you can also uh, connect it to the project economic and forecast software called BEEP for uh, Schlumberger. Uh, one main uh, disadvantage of the software is uh, its instability. The software is not very stable. It can crash a lot uh, during your work. Uh, so uh, if you are trying to use it, uh, try to save the work uh, always uh, after each step or each uh, work you are doing. But the software is very simple to use. Our next uh, package is DSS, uh, Halliburton Dynamic Surveillance System. Uh, it can handle a lot of data through the sophisticated uh, database. Uh, you have two different databases uh, connected to the software, called, um, called the public database, and the other is a private database. Uh, so everybody can work in his own uh, procedure until he have a result, then share the result to the public. So no one can damage uh, other uh, database or other uh, workflow. It has a very sophisticated calculation engine. It's a, it's a very stable database and they can, uh, can handle a lot of data and uh, different types of databases. But unfortunately, the, the graphical user interface is very old, very, very old, and uh, you may have some difficulties uh, to do uh, uh, a workflow in your head. Yes. Uh, our last one is DAX. Uh, this software uh, has very good uh, points. It uses uh, analogs as it have a database which you can benchmark your uh, reservoirs or fields against the database it have in the, uh, the, the data in the database. It can optimize the field development, enhance the production performance, and maximize the recovery efficiency uh, through this analysis and the things uh, work done through these fields. 
uh, can help you better understand how to improve reserves uh, booking. Uh, can implement new ideas and prepare for bid uh, opportunities for exploration uh, uh, concessions. The OFM graphical user interface. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, OFM have uh, a ribbon design. Uh, I don't know if you can see my mouse. Jade, the mouse is clear on the screen. Yes, yes, we can see the mouse. Okay. Uh, this is a screenshot of the software. Uh, the session will be interactive. We will open the software, but uh, until we open it, just uh, just a screenshot. Uh, as you see above here, this is the menu uh, or the ribbon menu. Uh, you have uh, three main ribbon: home and setup and view. Uh, you can do all the work through this uh, icons. You will have different windows across the, uh, the main window. Uh, everyone have a different task. Uh, in the analysis part, you would have uh, uh, the workflows and the chart already saved in your project. Uh, here you have the properties of the, uh, the window you are opening or the chart you are opening. You can ma manipulate this uh, chart or data. Here you would have filter of the project if you want to filter for a specific area, specific field of reservoir. And here's the navigation uh, window where you can select a specific well or a specific reservoir. Uh, here in the ribbon, in the home, you can see, see different uh, type of window or different type of analysis you can add to your uh, project. Uh, OFM project, uh, OFM software is based on a project uh, a basis, uh, which mean you will have uh, a file uh, connected to different databases. Your data will be, uh, your analysis will be uh, saved in this uh, project file. You can share it, uh, you can open it, uh, you can uh, delete or exchange any analysis inside it uh, anytime you want. Uh, this different analysis uh, have been there since uh, I think uh, 2014. Uh, the only new one is the analysis uh, button here. This is starting in 2016 or 17. Uh, this one can do all of this uh, analysis, but in a new uh, different way. And I think they will uh, uh, over uh, change uh, all this old one and the. It will have only analysis in the further, uh, further version of the, in the future. Uh, this analysis is for a decline analysis. As you can see, the, the data of for, some well, uh, for a well called A10, and the decline for it, and the prediction for the well. Uh, going to the next uh, ribbon menu, the setup. Uh, here, how you can manage your project itself, uh, which uh, databases are connected to your project, uh, which tables uh, are connected and how they are connected together. Uh, if you want to do some uh, uh, variable or calculate something not in your database, you will find it here in the calculated variable editor. Uh, you can, uh, you would have some, uh, uh, in your first project, then you can add uh, what you are working as you need. This is an example of uh, how to display data in a tabular form or just a table to have it in other in other software. This is the view uh, ribbon. Uh, the, here you can check uh, what window you want to have inside your main window uh, and how the, you can uh, lay out or organize them inside the window. Uh, for example, this analysis can be uh, disappear or appear by just by clicking this checkbox. Uh, if you click on the layout, you would have a uh, different layout, how it, uh, uh, the button, how is the layout in the screen. You will have it in the interactive uh, version. Uh, okay, I'm uh, trying to go uh, fast to uh, cover a lot of uh, slides as we are working. Uh, Going to the decline curve analysis, uh, of course, you know, you all know what is decline curve analysis, but just for uh, uh, summarizing or uh, and have a hint for people who may uh, 
not uh, have a background about it. It's a structural engineering empirical technique. Uh, what is meant by uh, empirical technique here is that it have no. Uh, it's not uh, derivative from uh, deriving from a uh, theory or something uh, just uh, an extrapolation trend the uh, different equations would have a different uh, uh, driven uh, method but the technique how wiser's bar would behave like uh, just like extrapolating there's uh, this is uh, completely empirical no there is no sense behind it uh, you just uh, extend the line, uh, linear or, uh, or exponential, and you, you would predict the production in the future by the, this way. Uh, as we mentioned, the client analysis uses production data from the oil or gas wells uh, versus rate, or uh, this rate versus time, or you can uh, draw the rate versus cumulative production. For example, you can draw oil rate versus time, uh, or uh, oil rate versus cum oil. Uh, this can be done uh, on uh, normal uh, coordination uh, paper or uh, logarithmic uh, scale or semi-logarithmic uh, semi scale. Uh, the decline Kelvin analysis technique is based on the assumption that uh, both the production trend and their controlling factors will continue in the future. Uh, this means that you are assuming there is no there is no major change in the reservoir behavior through uh, through time. You will don't have another uh, enhanced oil recovery. You will not starting water ingestion instead of normal uh, uh, decline. You, uh, you will continue with the normal condition. Uh, decline curve are characterized by three factors uh, to calculate the production. Uh, it would be the initial production rate uh, or the rate at some point uh, in time where you would uh, extrapolate from this point, uh, curvature of the curve, uh, and the rate of decline. Uh, one major model for the decline curve we all use is the ARPS decline curve uh, model. Uh, it have uh, three uh, characterized the production curve uh, curvature uh, through three types: uh, constant uh, or percentage decline through the log log, and uh, this called the ex uh, ex uh, exponential decline curve or hyperbolic decline curve or harmonic decline curve. Uh, this is how the three uh, models would appear in different uh, uh, papers. Uh, this is a co uh, coordinate normal coordination paper. Uh, this how the, the first one, which is uh, exponential, the second one is the hyperbolic, and the third one is the harmonic. If you plot the same three on a semi-log, uh, as the rate would be in the log scale, it would have uh, the exponential like a straight line. Uh, most of reservoirs and most of engineers use this uh, methodology to predict uh, uh, oil production through the future. Uh, some uh, reservoirs or some wells would not behave like uh, just exponential uh, like uh, this. Uh, strong water aquifers, uh, reservoirs would behave uh, some way between the hyperbolic and the harmonic uh, uh, model. And this is how you would uh, uh, appear if you uh, plot it against a log log block. Uh, the three uh, equations are based on this uh, simple equation. Uh, the predicted Q would be equal to the initial Q uh, at a specific time of point uh, divided by 1 plus B uh, DI multiplied by T all to the power of 1, o 1 over B. Uh, the DI is the decline uh, rate you are using. Uh, the B is called decline curve exponent. It will control how the curve would be. It would be exponential or hyperbolic or uh, harmonic. Uh, for example, if you uh, if the BF zero, uh, you would have the equation like this: Q uh, Q total Q T is equal to Q I exponential uh, minus D I multiplied by T, and this is the exponential uh, exponential decline. Uh, if it have a, the if D have a value between zero and one, it would be hyperbolic. Uh, the aggressive case would be harmonic, uh, which would be equal to one. And this would be the equation for every case. Uh, now let's have the OFM on the screen uh, and do some uh, decline curve. Can you see the OFM?
Jed. Yes, I'm Jed. too. Jed. Uh, can you see the OFM? The software, no. We are still uh, seeing the presentation. Still the presentation. One minute. Now? Now, yes. Now. Okay. It's clear right now. Uh, this is the uh, OFM version 2019.1. Uh, uh, it's nearly the same graphical user interface since uh, 2017. Have the front uh, upgrades inside the uh, workflow itself, but the same user interface. Uh, this is the ribbon I, call, uh, I told you about. Uh, this is the layout what the it change how the window are displayed across the, your window. Uh, every project, uh, when you start a new project or uh, open uh, any project, you would have uh, what's called the base map. Uh, the base map would display all the uh, wells or entities you have uh, on a map view, uh, X, Y coordination. Uh, you would have here the analysis, but the analysis you have, you can store or delete or rename any of them, very simple. Uh, you can, uh, through working, you can display different uh, attributes on the map, like the well name, or uh, if you want to display uh, oil rate or water cut, you can do it. Uh, you can select any well from here. It will be highlighted on the screen when you select any well. Uh, in the this uh, purple color or main color, uh, this field uh, has uh, around nine platforms uh, with subcategories four to five reservoir. Two main reservoirs of them are uh, Nobia and Nazareth. Uh, here you can. Uh, Filter any of the data if you don't work, want to like to work with all the data to make the software more responsive. You can just filter a platform or you would hear only have the wells for the platform called the A platform. Uh, as I mentioned before, the one disadvantage uh, of the software was its instability and uh, it hangs between every process and the other. If you click on the filter, it takes time while it's filtering the data, then it starts to respond to again. And now you can see only the wells from a platform A. If you want to check that again, you will display all the, uh, the wells. Let's uh, the client. Working. I hope it ends before the session is ended. <laughs> Okay. Do you have something more to add, Jir uh, Islam? Uh, yes, I am continuing, but the software is uh, calculating. Uh, that's what I was talking about. It takes some time to, when you're doing filter or unfilter the data, it's uh, used to, cal to calculate all the uh, variables in the system and to do all the lots again. So it takes time. Uh, yeah. To come response again. Okay. Okay. Here we are. 
uh, from here you would have uh, different, as I mentioned before, different type of blocks or uh, robots you can uh, use. Uh, the new and the most powerful one of them are the analysis tool. It can have, you can use it to do any of this uh, uh, workflows. Uh, so if you start analysis, uh, you will have here again to ask you what type of analysis you want to do. Uh, let's say we want to do the client curve analysis. Uh, uh, when you open the, the client curve analysis, it will ask you what is the oil rate and what is the oil fume in your database uh, it will use to calculate. For the oil rate, we will use calendar days oil rate and the oil fume, we will use cumulative, cumulative oil volume. Done. Okay, uh, just uh, by uh, clicking this uh, button, you will, now, you will have now a window showing a decline curve for the well selected A10. Uh, the software, when you select a well, it automatically uh, calculate a decline curve for all uh, using all the data available in the history. Uh, will you see now how to change this uh, point, uh, how to select a specific point or uh, uh, excluding uh, points you, which is our, which are odd in the history. Uh, this is uh, the client curve uh, in a semi-log uh, plot, uh, the oil rate on a semi-log in a log uh, scale and the date on a normal coordinated scale. Uh, let's have a well call that set, for example. Okay, let's work on A10. Uh, this will show that it's the start of production uh, 1994 uh, until uh, 2006. Uh, the oil stop uh, the production with 100 barrel oil, which is the economic limit for this field. Uh, the software automatically calculated the decline using all the data. Uh, you can find here the results of the decline. Uh, you can see here that the fifth method is auto, which means you automatically selected all the data uh, and started the started production in uh, 1993, ended production of 2005. Uh, the initial queue would be 300. 3000 was a decline of uh, 0.024 uh, percentage per year. Uh, this, uh, this is the uh, how you did the how you calculated the decline from the history, uh, and this is what is the forecasting of the production. Let's now say we won't, don't want to use this uh, points uh, here because it looks like odd points, maybe due to. Uh, this way is a gas lifted well, so maybe due to problems with the gas lift system or uh, changing in the well head parameter, the, the well didn't behave uh, in a normal way. So if you click here, right click, you will see this uh, uh, one, use lesso to exclude point. Uh, this is a very simple tool, just by clicking it, the mouse will be go like a bend. You draw around the well the points you don't like. For example, we don't want all of this point. If you can see now, it's uh, gone from dark red or red with uh, dark green, sorry, or green with uh, a line, a black line around it to just bright green. This means you are not uh, use this point in the uh, calculating of the decline rate. Uh, now uh, the decline have been changed uh, uh, somehow down here. Uh, but uh, let's say we do we want to do further uh, analysis on this uh, one. If you click here and uh, click on edit template default scenario art, you will have this screen. Uh, this screen will ask you what type of solution you want. Do you, do you want to use ARPS or calculated uh, equation or power law? Uh, as we mentioned in the presentation, ARPS is uh, 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 most likely used uh, in the decline curve. Let's use it. 
is a where rate you will select uh, what uh, what is the decline you want to uh, if you have different oil rate calculated by different ways you would select the one you want to do fine uh, and this is the cumulative oil to be uh, cal uh, calculated and store the data in uh, you would have here what is called uh, analysis uh, or are you going to do a rate type, um, analysis or a rate cumulative analysis as we mentioned in the, uh, in the presentation there are two types of decline you can decline the rate versus time or the oil rate versus cum oil or cum water uh, and in every case you would stop the decline uh, or the forecasting at the economic limit uh, or if you have a plan at the specific time uh, effect type, if you want to uh, uh, select the model you are using in the arts, you can use select exponential, hyperbolic, or harmonic, or best fit according to the point you select, the calculating engine will uh, best fit the point and select the most suitable one. Let's say you would use the exponential, or the best fit one. Uh, this uh, data is used to do what is uh, Standardize the data or uh, normalizing the data too. Uh, don't uh, leave it none. Uh, uh, DI, which is the decline rate, uh, you want it as optimized decline rate, or uh, you would, uh, should, uh, should give a range that would be uh, trying to uh, matching the data within this range. Take it, uh, leave it optimized. And this uh, point filter five is used to do uh, not a, a stochastic uh, uh, analysis. It would be give a probabilistic analysis. If you uh, select here a confidence, confidence interval and select the interval to be Sorry, it changes the data. Let's take a look again. Or As you can see here, it added uh, the run of uncertainty you want to add. This is mean that you have uncertainty of uh, 60%. You are 60% uh, uh, accurate or uh, confident about your uh, data. Uh, you may do 80. It will give a higher uh, confidence. Okay, and this part is about how you forecast the future. Here is the history matching part, how it history matches the decline, and has a different decline used in the future. Uh, this part is the forecasted part. Uh, you can see the black one to right. We are still seeing the software. There's a black window uh, here. Can you see it? I am working yes. with it for a while now. Yes, yes. It's moving now, right? Okay. Uh, here in the, this part is called, the, this is the historical, we ended it. Now we go to the uh, schedule part, uh, how you would forecast the future. Uh, start time uh, months from the end or last historical data or from historical or the uh, date. 
this how uh, when when you want to start your forecast. Let's say we want to start the forecast uh, uh, by this way uh, to start for, uh, forecast from today. But let's say we want to forecast, start forecast uh, twelve months from now. It has been moved uh, to to, uh, to until to, uh, 2021. Uh, this would be uh, if you have a rig, uh, will enter the will uh, uh, button the well to do the work over or recite track, uh, it will not enter today. So, you will want to, to have the your oil forecast uh, in the right time. So, you start to, to enter the months or just the date, for example, here. I know that the work over will take place in. Uh, And one of January, first of January, two thousand twenty-five, for example, it has been changed here to twenty-five, two thousand twenty-five. Okay, uh, and this is how much, uh, how many months you want to the forecast to go. Uh, here you can uh, it will forecast uh, one hundred twenty months. Or you just can select from here to uh, stop the forecast at the specific date. Let's say uh, this concession will end in 2028. We'll have three years of production now. It will stop production after three years. Uh, the end rate uh, would enter here when the forecast would stop. The forecast would stop if the end time is achieved or the end rate is achieved. Uh, this end rate would be the economic uh, limit for every well. Let's say we have an economic limit of this field 50, not 100. So you will see now there is no reserve remaining because uh, the decline is uh, uh, the starting uh, rate is less than the. 50 barrel, let's say one barrel, and we'll change it again. Okay. If you have the look here, uh, you will have now two green lines. Uh, this line is showing the end of concession or end date, and uh, the horizontal line is showing the economic limit of the oil. Okay, until now it's okay. Let's say uh, the star. Okay. Uh, here, uh, here uh, what data it will use in the equation? Let's say uh, here you use the uh, D from historical regression automatically, or let's uh, say uh, circle one is 0 0.022. Let's say we want to be more aggressive uh, and pessimistic in our uh, prediction. We we'll use prediction exponential and the interest as 0. 3. Now the decline is more aggressive. If you see the slope of this line is more aggressive than the slope of this line. Uh, we may do this to be more uh, pessimistic and not to have a uh, higher value of reserve. Then at the end we would have uh, due to uh, uncertainty of the data or uh, any problems during working in the well. The rate is not as predicted, so the rate will drop and the, the result will also drop. So we may be, uh, like to be more uh, aggressive or uh, pessimistic with your uh, decline curve. OK. 
Okay. Uh, this is an example of uh, a declining curve. Very simple. Uh, here you would have the results of your uh, decline. Uh, here, if you can see, this is the schedule, which is the prediction. It started uh, from one, uh, end of December 2025 until the end of uh, 2027. As we mentioned, the uh, initial oil production is uh, 25 barrel per day. Uh, the decline would be 0.03. And in the case, we would have uh, 70,000 barrel oil of reserve. Because this value is very low, you too, we are uh, using the end rate of the oil. We can have a higher rate uh, after, let's say, we will do our work over and add birth to job, we would have a higher uh, uh, start rate here. This is start rate, we will change it to a value. And this is uh, say uh, our estimation of the oil to be start with uh, 500 barrel oil. Here we go. Uh, there is the start with the 500 barrel oil and start to do the decline with the decline we are uh, annually input. In the case, we would have. Uh, Uh, a reserve of uh, 300 barrel uh, oil because uh, we achieved the uh, end of concession limit. This means that uh, this is how the bracket is different from the theoretical. Uh, in normal way, in theoretical way, uh, you just ended your forecast now. Uh, but if you look at uh, from the economic uh, view or the practical view, uh, you have uh, more reserves you can reduce, uh, but uh, due to the late start of the well, you have uh, due to the late start of the well, you have uh, minimized your reserves. Uh, so you can do, have another forecast here and add a new schedule. Let's say we would have another uh, rig coming earlier than this one uh, and have all the same data. Date. But we'll, we'll have the oil in production by the start of 2022. Uh, the start rate would be the same value. And then the at the same concession it with the same economic limit or end rate and the same Decline date. Use this one. As you can see now, the area under this curve is higher. We now can produce up to uh, 0.5 million barrel oil. Uh, here you would have the data sheet. Uh, this is the data uh, used to plot this curve, the forecast and the historical data. All here you can have it uh, copy and or export to Excel and use it in other software or, other, uh, or present it to your manager or uh, uh, your team. This is a uh, schedule data, which is a forecasted. And this is part is the circle deck. Let's see, come back to the uh, presentation.
Now we are going to uh, have a talk about water flooding conformance, uh, how to manage water flooding fields uh, through curves and maps. Uh, one simple curve uh, would be the voltage replacement ratio VRR. Uh, voltage replacement refers to replacing the volume of oil and gas uh, and the water produced from the reservoir by injected flow. Which means you have a project of water injection. You inject uh, water and produce in, uh, from the producers uh, water and gas and oil. Some you are, uh, some of course, you are not interested from the produced water, but it's become as a secondary phase you can't uh, uh, overcome. Uh, at the end, uh, you are depleting your reservoir. You are depleting the pressure of the reservoir. So a good uh, practice is to uh, calculate uh, how much uh, oil, you, how much fluid you produce, and how much you replace uh, them with. So this percentage is called VRR. It would be the injected reservoir volume uh, divided by the produced reservoir volume. Uh, this is the normal equation, which are the produced volumes multiplied by the beta, uh, which is the formation volume factor for every phase uh, separate. Uh, it should be applied on all the produced phases and all the injected phases. For the sake of uh, simplicity, let's do it now. And just you are injecting water and producing oil uh, without the beta. So if we can come back. Uh, okay, let's uh, continue what other products will do and we'll go one time to the OFM. Uh, there's a other thing called the conformance blocks. Uh, this blood helps categor uh, categorize the injection behavior. Uh, how you, uh, every compartment of every reservoir you have would behave with injection of uh, injected volume of water. Uh, uh, in this case, when you inject uh, water, you are predicting to produce the same amount of, uh, of uh, fluids in the producer to keep the reservoir pressure the same. So we are uh, uh, we have two different types of blood. The first plot would be have the cumulative water injection in the, in the x axis and the cumulative oil production on the y axis. You can plot it on a logarithmic scale or a normal coordination scale. A second plot would be have also water injection fumes on the x axis and the water cut percentage on the vertical axis. Uh, this plot would show you uh, how much the water uh, goes uh, through the channels to the, uh, the producers and which uh, uh, wells or which uh, uh, parts of the reservoir would have a, a higher water cut due to the water injection. Now let's go again to share the OFM and do this two blocks on it. Start a new analysis. Uh, as we mentioned, you want to plot uh, the VRR. Uh, first, this VRR is not uh, a data in our database, it's not a field. We have to calculate this field. So, in that case, you will have to go to the, the variable editor or calculate, uh, calculate engine you have. Uh, here, I added a variable called the VRR. Uh, this is how uh, it, uh, what it is, uh, the question uh, is. It uh, used the water injection rate and divided by the total liquid rate. This is the simplest case. We ignore the gas, we uh, ignore the formation volume factor just uh, for uh, simplicity and showing you the, how it looks like. When you click OK to ask you for a name, we call that we are off. Okay. Now we have in our database a variable called VRR, voltage replacement ratio. Uh, we want to direct, uh, we'll select the uh, type of the curve we need here is a line curve. Uh, here you would have the uh, asking you what variables you want to draw. So we want to click on the variables and write VRR. Uh, 
and select it, click finish. You will have now to select with, with uh, uh, different group of wells with injection and production. So, okay, first of all, it will select all the wells we have. Calculating data now. Okay, uh, we want to do this VRR calculation for every reservoir. So we we'll select it to delete the data using the reservoir. Take too much time. Look like it hangs. Let's go to the presentation until it uh, work again. Uh, different types of maps you can draw using uh, OFM, you can have a boil map, uh, just a, a boy with the, uh, for everywhere in its, uh, its location, downhole or surface location, and the production for every uh, phase, or a boy separate, uh, which is the percentage of water to the total flow or something like that. Uh, you could have a GIS map, this is a new technique to display the Earth's map, just as you watch it on 
Google Earth or something with the width uh, above it, uh, and uh, you can see the your fields, the surface surfaces, and uh, how far uh, everywhere from the other. You can have a contour map. Uh, this contour map is which you know may know uh, or used as a structural map when you draw depths, uh, depths or thickness map. You can do it a contour map for a specific. Uh, uh, parameter or specific uh, phase, you can draw a water cut uh, contour map where it can show you where is the water, uh, where the water is high uh, and where you have still have some potential of oil. I wish it has been now working. Okay, just before. Okay, here is it. You now have. Uh, four reservoirs uh, for, with, with four curves, but they all have the same color. So we can here change the color for everyone by reservoir. As you can see now, you have different, uh, here is the legion and here is the map. You have different uh, performance for every reservoir. With, uh, uh, a good practice in the water flooding project is to have uh, VRR uh, around the, uh, or equal to one. Uh, so uh, uh, the, if you see here, uh, this yellow and the blue one is nearly above for blue the one. Uh, the red one is has a very high injection rate, which uh, uh, over injecting the reservoirs. In this life, the this blue, uh, yellow, which is the Nokia reservoir, have uh, under uh, under injection. You need to increase the injection in this reservoir, but you may be injecting this low volumes because the availability of the water or uh, just the water cut increased rapidly in the reservoir so you should some producers to increase the oil cut again uh, another uh, example would be as we mentioned you can draw instead of the vrr you can draw oil volume on the y-axis and water injection volume in the x-axis uh, and with the data again by reservoir as you can see the workflow the procedure of generating a curve or uh, uh, technique is very simple, it's just a uh, uh, small fix and you have the data you need. Uh, it takes time because uh, of the huge amount of data and the calculation is done in the background. Uh, here again, we have the different uh, reservoirs with different colors. Uh, fume motor injection volume uh, against fume oil volume. Uh, the best case uh, is that uh, the, when you inject, uh, increase the injection of water volume, you would have uh, an opposite increase in the uh, cumulative oil you are producing. Uh, so uh, this reservoir, which is, if you are uh, here with the mouse, you can see the data for this reservoir, it's a large linear cumulative oil volume versus the water injection. It looks like it has a very good uh, start for in the terms of water injection, but the injection stopped here. The one with the complete history would be this Nubia reservoir. It shows the uh, 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 slope for the line. It shows that uh, you have now a, a good uh, management of, of the, uh, the field. Uh, you are having uh, oil increase against every barrel of water you inject. Uh, let's have a, a quick look about a map in the map society. Uh, this is what I was talking about. This is the GIS map. Uh, this is the Gulf of Suez, and uh, all the ways uh, uh, you are this linear is right here. If you are going near it, uh, here uh, this is a time step. The system step. If you are going to delay.
crashed. <laughs> uh, okay, Engineer Islam, I guess that our uh, time uh, has ended. Okay. So, uh, if you please, uh, if you have some questions, please type them down in the chat. Is everyone hearing me? I think the Hisham really raised his hand. Do you want to ask something? So Hisham, if you have a question, please can you write it down? Okay. So Jan, I think uh, people are sending uh, their questions to me. So uh, Amar is asking how can we predict water uh, production from uh, bubble maps? Uh, you don't predict the water production uh, in a quantitative way. It's a qualitative uh, prediction. Uh, you can draw uh, by ma uh, bubble maps or contour map uh, for every well and the uh, share of water cut percentage would show you in the map where is the area with the higher uh, water cut than others. So you now have a visualization of wells with higher water cut in a specific area or a specific direction and the lower cut in, uh, in other wells. So you would predict that this is the direction of moving of water. Uh, so if you are going to drill a new well or uh, doing some more cover or repair, uh, adding repair, you would uh, go away from this uh, area of high water cut. Instead, you will go to the lower, uh, uh, lower water cut area. Uh, as I mentioned, this is a qualitative, not a quantitative. If you're going to need to do a quantitative analysis, you will have to do a decline curve, for example, using uh, water oil ratio derivative. And this is a method of declining of oil uh, rate versus cumulative oil production. Okay, there is another question from uh, Khalid. He's asking, uh, can we do a WOR uh, water oil ratio plots? Uh, yes, this is just uh, I, I said now. Uh, yes, you can do the water oil ratio when you are doing. Uh, if you can remember uh, when I shared the, screen, the black screen with the decline uh, curve parameters. Uh, in that case, you will have uh, rate versus time or rate versus uh, QM. Uh, instead of QM, you will use a water oil uh, ratio. You will use have. Now we have rate versus uh, QM oil. And another curve uh, blew it, uh, water oil ratio derivative. A uh, water ratio and water oil ratio derivative. And you will stop the production uh, prediction uh, when you achieve the uh, maximum oil, oil ratio uh, you are, uh, can handle with your current facilities. And this would be the end point for the production uh, prediction. Okay, great. Uh, Muhammad is asking, uh, how accurate is the decline curve analysis compared to the results uh, that we have from the material balance equation? Uh, okay, uh, actually the material balance is not used to the predict results. It used to uh, estimate and uh, uh, have a figure about the stoves in the reservoirs. Uh, and when you are doing uh, a study about material balance, you can now have a vision about the type of uh, water aquifer you have or the type of the power uh, in your reservoir. So you can use it in uh, decline to uh, decline curve to estimate the decline rate. Uh, but the decline uh, curve answer is the uh, method used for the reserve estimation, not material balance. 
you can use other methods like uh, analog or uh, simulation models. You can use it to predict this uh, reserves. Uh, but uh, to be more accurate than the decline curve in case you have to use simulation, but uh, the benefit of the, uh, the decline curve is very simple, uh, very time effective. You can predict a reserve just in two or five minutes compared to, of course, to the smart simulation. Okay, because we are running out of time, uh, I will take this last question. Uh, what are the conditions to select uh, the region if the wheel is, is producing with different rates? I think he's asking about uh, the decline curve analysis if we have uh, some fluctuations in the in the, over the period of the production. Which which period would we would choose? Uh, as you uh, can remember from this uh, the presentation, uh, the behavior, the uh, principle of using the decline curve is. Uh, you are assuming that the reservoir or the wheel will not uh, behave in a different way. You are extrapolating the behavior of the reservoir. So you should select an area with a smooth production with the condition near the condition you are predicting to have the wheel producing on it. Uh, let's say, for example, you are producing the wheel now with uh, specific wheel head pressure and uh, open the uh, choke uh, wire so the wheel head pressure dropped and the rate increased. Uh, then you come back to the normal condition. You shall exclude uh, this uh, period because you will not operating under this condition. You will operate under the normal condition you have. So you would have a uh, select uh, area with a smooth point uh, trend you area where you have uh, uh, good know your uh, conditions of the reservoir and the well head parameters of it. And of course, the same type of uh, artificial lift. You don't uh, would have the same decline if you are using the gas left compared to ESV because you, the rate uh, uh, you are producing would be different. And the, uh, consequently, with the decline uh, rate of cost change. Okay, thank you. Um...